Welcome to my Spotlight Cash Review, where we'll be taking a look at all of the data mined information for which cards are tentatively scheduled to be running in Spotlights between now and the end of January 2024. It is worth noting, as is always the case when reviewing data mined information, that some of this is subject to change. So be sure to check the pinned comment down below the video, because I'll always update that with anything that's different as of the current date and time compared to when this video was recorded. For example, something noteworthy is that as of my recording of today's video, all of the new cards releasing in December as well as January are currently data mined to be coming direct to Series 5. We've seen in the past, we had full months of all Series 5 cards, and they ultimately ended up downgrading one or two of them in most of those months to Series 4 before those cards actually started releasing. So they're all going to say Series 5 in this video for upcoming new card releases in December or January, but that might change. And if it does, it'll be listed in the pinned comment below. That being said, let's go ahead and dive on into the meat and potatoes of today's ranking system. I'm going to be rating all of the spotlight caches I review today between 1 and 5. Essentially, what I'm looking for in spotlight caches that I'm rating strongly are cards returning that are Series 5, because those cards are more expensive to get with your collector's tokens, and cards that are format staples, things that see play in a lot of deck lists, or things that are key to whatever deck they're being played in and are not really replaceable. All those quantifiers in place, keep in mind that which spotlight caches are best for you are going to differ depending on the texture of your collection. A spotlight cache week that I rate as a five because all of the cards that are quite strong might be worse for you personally because you already have one or two of the cards running in it. Meaning that if I rank something, you know, kind of middle of the road at a three, but you're missing all three cards in it, that's still going to be an excellent week for you to open your caches. And ultimately, the best weeks for you to open your caches are the ones that have the cards that you think you'll have the most fun playing because this is a game and you should have fun now let's have fun taking a look at all the sweet cards that are coming up huh our first spotlight cash to review running from november 7th to november 14th contains Eliath, null and negasonic teenage warhead i'm going to give this spotlight cash a fairly strong four out of five stars because while it does contain two series four cards all three of these cards are format staples after teenage warhead got her recent glow up to a three two who now survives when she blows away one of your opponent's cards our next spotlight cache running from November 14th through November 21st contains Gladiator, Mirage, and Loki. I'm giving the spotlight cache week a fairly low rating of two stars, one of the lowest you're going to see in the video today. And the primary reason for that is Loki is really the only super appealing thing about the spotlight cache. Loki is series five and a format staple that define the decks that he's played in, but Mirage is definitely what I refer to as a replacement level card. You can sub her out for Sentinel and basically any deck list and be operating at 80 or maybe even 90% efficiency. Gladiator is a new confirmed to be direct to series five card, but I would speculate that he's going to be fairly niche at best. And I would be shocked if he defined any must play decks. All that being said, while the Spotlight Cash Week isn't powerful, it's definitely pretty, and that Justina Loki variant is one that I personally have been waiting for, so there's a good chance that I spew this week chasing after some fantastic artwork. Our next Spotlight Cash running from November 21st through November 28th contains Annihilus, Dakin, and X-23. I'm giving this Spotlight Cash a perfect 5 out of 5 star rating, and it's actually the only spotlight cash scheduled to run for the rest of this year that I'm giving this powerful of a ranking to. Dakin has become a format staple inside of discard decks and X-23 is the same inside of Destroy and they're both series 5 cards. Annihilus is confirmed to be a brand new direct to series 5 release coming in November and honestly I also expect it to be a fairly potent card. I think if you want to play Annihilus and you're missing Dakin, X-23 or both this is a phenomenal week to be opening your caches. Our next spotlight cache running from November 28th through December 5th contains Martyr, Jean Grey, and Spider-Man 2099. In stark contrast to the five-star rating I gave the week before this, this spotlight cache week actually has the lowest rating of anything you're going to see today, and I'm giving it just one star. Uh, Jean Grey is a series five card that sees some amount of fringe play being good into some archetypes like destroy but spider-man 2099 is a series four card looking for a home and martyr is another one drop stat stick that's 
going to get blown away by Killmonger for a little while yet, and she's de re releasing directly into Series 4, making this an easy week to skip, I think, for most people. Moving along into the first week of the December season, running from December 5th through the 12th, we have The Blob, Stegron, and Jeff the Baby Land Shark in our spotlight cache. I'm giving this week a middle of the road three out of five stars, primarily on the back of the fact that Jeff the Baby Land Shark is a format staple that's good in tons of places and goes into a large variety of decks. The Blob is tentatively a new card release that could be Series 5, but it's played ability is definitely something that's up in the air. Stegron, while it's definitely a pet favorite of mine, it's definitely the furthest thing from a format staple possible, and it's only Series 4. Also worth noting before we jump onto the next spotlight, for those of you keeping track at home, the Blob being a new card released the first week of the season does mean that Snap is increasing their release cycle slightly, meaning that Spotlights have a new card every single week now, as opposed to an off week in the first week of the season like we've seen historically. Our second week of the December season, running from December 12th through the 19th, contains Firestar, the Living Tribunal, and Ravona Renslayer. I am once again giving the Spotlight Cash a middle-of-the-road rating of 3 out of 5 stars. It is worth noting that Living Tribunal is making up the bulk of that rating. Living Tribunal is not only a Series 5 card, but it's one that is basically not replaceable in any archetype that is contained in. So if you're someone that's been looking at Living Tribunal decks as something that you want to play, I think this is a very worthwhile week to open regardless of the rating because of the unique effect that Living Tribunal brings to the game. The third week of the December season, running from the 19th through the 26th, contains Havoc, Nico Minaru, and Legion. As much as it hurts me to give any spotlight cash with Nico in it a low rating, I have to put two stars on this week because... Havoc, even though he's a new card, if he releases with his current text box, he looks completely undesirable and uninteresting unless he functions in some way that none of us are predicting. Legion is a card that, while playable, is Series 4 and has fallen out of favor in most of the meta decks. And Nico Minaru is honestly my favorite card currently in Marvel Snap. She goes in a lot of decks. She's Series 5. She is the only reason I'm giving this week two points at all. All of that being said, if you want to play Nico, you're going to need to open this week. And I don't think they put this highly desirable card in with a couple of stinkers by mistake. Second dinner, kind of rude. Closing out the December season in the 2024 calendar year, running from the 26th through January 2nd, we have Celine. Iron Lad, and the Black Knight in our Spotlight Cash. I'm giving this Cash Week a fairly strong 4 out of 5 stars for its rating. Iron Lad is a unique and powerful effect that goes into a variety of deck lists, adding a good amount of consistency to them. If you're missing that card alone, I think it's probably worth opening Cash's 4 as it'll open up lots of new opportunities in your collection. Black Knight is a, another Series 5 card this week that has a unique effect that can't be replaced in his decks, but those decks also aren't necessarily at the top of the competitive metagame, even if they are fun and unique. Finally, the new card releasing this week, Selene, I think is interesting and likely competitive inside of Clutter decks and something that myself and many others will likely love playing with. Moving along to our first spotlight cache of 2024, running from January 2nd through the 9th, we have Kyaria as a new card release, the High Evolutionary, as well as Hitmonkey. I'm giving this spotlight cache week a spectacular 5 out of 5 stars. High Evolutionary is a Series 5 archetype-defining card that cannot be replaced in any deck that he is contained in. If you want to play High Evo, you need to have High Evo, and I think that alone makes this cash worth opening for if you're missing him. Similarly, Hitmonkey is a card that, while it doesn't go in nearly as many decks, is unique in the function that it has and is difficult to replace while also being another Series 5 card. Finally, Kyaria is a card that many people, myself included, have been waiting for an effect like this to come to the game so we can play kazoo decks or things with one drops that are susceptible to Killmonger and not worry about him blowing away the entire board. I'd be very surprised if she's not a very playable Marvel snap card.
For the second week of January, running from the 9th through the 16th, we have Hercules, Galactus, and Howard the Duck running in our spotlight cash. I'm giving this cash week a fairly weak two out of five star ratings, in large part due to the fact that Howard the Duck is kind of a non-card for Marvel Snap. While his ongoing effect is unique, and he has niche play inside of some things like Iron Lad Spectrum, even inside of his own niche, you could easily replace him with a variety of other cards and still have your deck operate at almost similar amounts of of efficiency. Galactus is a series five card and typically defines the decks that he's being played in, but he's also only played in one very narrow specific kind of deck. Hercules is a new card that could tentatively be series five, but could also be series four, but I also expect that regardless, he's going to be kind of niche, which is ultimately why the Spotlight Cash Week gets a low rating for me. Looking to the third week of January, running from the 16th through the 23rd, we have new card release Meek, and at this point, a returning card release in Annihilus, as well as the Phoenix Force. I'm giving the Spotlight Cash Week a fairly solid four out of five star rating. The Phoenix Force as a deck has been competitive off and on, and the Phoenix Force is not replaceable in that deck list as it is the defining card in it. When I'm recording this video, Annihilus still hasn't released yet, but tentatively, I kind of of expect it to be a format staple or at the very least define its own archetype similar to Phoenix Force and Meek looks like a neat and likely playable card inside of discard shells which have consistently been playable for the last little bit here in Snap. All of this contributing to the strong rating for this week. Moving along to the fourth week of the January season, running from the 23rd through the 30th, we have the Grand Master Loki, as well as Elsa Bloodstone. I'm giving the Spotlight Cash a perfect five out of five star rating because the Grandmaster seems like a interesting new card that could be competitive in a lot of shells and Loki and Elsa have both proven themselves to be format staples that are difficult to replace and also currently exist in series five as of the recording of this video. Closing out our final spotlight cash in the last week of January for this review video, running from January 30th through February 6th, we have Beta Ray Bill, Werewolf by Night, and Nebula. I am once again giving a spotlight cash a perfect five out of five star rating. Both Werewolf by Night and Nebula are currently series five cards that are format staples played in a variety of deck lists. Werewolf by Night in particular is a card that's difficult to replace because of the power that it brings to the table and the decks that it's loaded up in. Beta Ray Bill is potentially a series five card that hard to know exactly the playability on, but I think in tandem with these other two fantastic cards, the spotlight deserves its strong rating. Leave a quick summary here at the end. The absolute worst spotlight cash week, in my opinion, coming up over the next few months is the last week of November into the first week of December, containing Martyr, Jean Grey, and Spider-Man 2099 being the only one I review today to get a one out of five star rating. While I gave a perfect five out of five star rating to four spotlight cash weeks over the upcoming next 13. If I were to pick out one as the best of the best, I would definitely make it the Annihilus deck in X23 week running from November 21st through the 28th. If you want to know why that is, make sure you go back and watch that breakdown in order if you're someone that skipped to the end of the video to find out which one was the best. As I said at the start of the video, while these ratings aim to be objective in today's video, the process of which weeks you should be opening your spotlight caches is deeply subjective based on personal preference of the things you would enjoy as well as the current contents of your Marvel Snap collection. In general, if you're someone that's not near collection complete like myself, I would always encourage you to hold your spotlight caches for weeks where you are missing two or more cards. This allows you to optimize your resources to get the most new shiny toys to be playing with. Also, as is always the case with data mined information, some of the things contained in this video, especially the tentative series new cards are releasing into are definitely subject to change. Make sure you check under this video for a pinned comment if you're watching this at some point long after it was published. I'll issue any corrections or updates that need to be made as data mines and information changes down below.
Finally, as always, I'd love feedback on the format and process of today's videos. Hoglandia regulars will note that I deviated from my previous spotlight cache ranking systems a little bit, and there were a couple of reasons for that. The first is with every upcoming card currently data mined to be series five, when that likely won't be the case, it felt wrong to give points off or on for that like I had in the past. The second thing is that I no longer gave extra points inside of spotlight cache weeks for things being big bads or permanently series five because at this current point in time there's a big question mark over series drops in general so everything is kind of a permanent series five or series four card so it felt weird to be giving extra points for that when it kind of applies to everything as always if you enjoyed my musings on this topic snap that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel you made it all the way through the end of the video so you probably enjoyed at least some of what you had to hear and hopefully we'll see you back again real soon for some more Marvel Snap stuff here on YouTube.